Good morning. morning. We want to welcome each one here this morning. Have a rather small crowd, but it's it's understandable, and yet it's good we can come together as God's people to worship and praise Him. We're thankful to have um, Pastor John Block with us um, this morning. He comes from Brandon, who works for the Center of Hope, and he'll be um, sharing the work there that they they do with us this morning. Privilege to have you here, John. Um, Just uh, few to keep in our prayers. Um, we want to remember all those who've been infected with the, the virus. Um, thankful that Gerald Van Zee was able to go back home. Um, Leanne called and she was quite ecstatic that he was doing very well. So we're thankful for that. I um, want to remember Rex Winter as he has uh, moved into the nursing home. So um, keep him in our prayers. And we want to um, remember Davis and Teresa and the passing of, David, of Teresa's grandpa, Leonard DeVries, this past week. So. And also, um, there will not be uh, men's prayer breakfast tomorrow morning, but we will still have a um, prayer service tomorrow evening. So um, you're all welcome to come to that. For our call to worship this morning, we turn in our bulletins. And it comes to us from Isaiah 55. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come by and eat. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy? Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. And making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And we begin our worship this morning by turning to number 764, the trees of the field. this morning in these words, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, his only Son, through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our God, having greeted us, let's take a moment to greet each other.
morning, Carla. Morning, Joan.
wondrous deeds. Behold our God, seated on his throne. Come, let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare. Come, let us adore him. Who has felt the nails upon his hands, bearing all the guilt of sinful man? God eternal, humble to the grave, Jesus, Savior, risen now to reign. Behold our God, seated on the throne, come let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare. Thank you, ladies, for leading us in song and worship this morning. As I mentioned, um, this morning we're privileged to have with us Pastor John Block from the Center of Hope in Sioux Falls. And so, John, if you would come up and share with us um, the work. Good morning. It is good to be here. I called Gary a while ago and I said, I think I misjudged the time. And we talked it over a little bit and I realized that if I pushed it, I'd make it. And I made it in plenty of time. I was a little really nervous. I've never been late for something like this. And it was like, oh, what a start to the day. Um, so glad to be here. It's a beautiful day. Um, my drive across the plains this morning was pleasant as well. It looks like this is kind of auto running, so I'm going to just let it do that. And if you can look at that and listen to me at the same time, then great. If you can't, then try to listen to me first, and you can, that'll still be going, OK? So um, some of you are better multitaskers than others. I know I'm not that great at it. So um, my name is John Block, B-L-O-K. Uh, I'm a Dutch guy from Wisconsin originally. And uh, I landed in this region when I went to Northwestern College in Orange City and then um, kind of never left here. I married a girl from Northwest Iowa and uh, landed in South Dakota shortly after that. And we've been here, boy, let me think now. It's got, going on 20 years that we've been in South Dakota with a little stint in Iowa kind of in the middle of that. So um, my background has been in church ministry for a little over 20 years. I was a youth leader for the vast majority of that. I like to work in youth ministry. Um, my boss likes to say, you just graduated from little kids to big kids. So um, in my ministry at the Center of Hope, um, some of the people I meet with are very childlike, but that is amazing because uh, we're called to childlike faith. And I think sometimes um, we think we got it all figured out uh, for those of us who have been raised in the church, those are privileged to have uh, that foundation. 
um, often taken for granted. And so a lot of the guests that we work with are people who have never um, been taught how to love or how to be loved. And for many of them, the grace of God is kind of a foreign concept. Um, so we first demonstrate it by meeting with them, by helping them to get clothing that they need, by helping them with a bicycle. Uh, seems kind of crazy, but we're actually selling bikes this last week, just a couple. It tapers off this time of year, but we have some people that's the only way they can get around. And many years ago, Fred Wilgenberg, our founder, some of you probably know him, I see some nods out there. He got some bikes delivered, they were dropped off at the center and he said, what am I gonna do with these? Half of them were broken and he started handing them out because he realized that there were some people who could use alternate transportation. At that time, we were giving away coats for free. Um, several years later, we realized that that was kind of a mistake, that um, giving them away for free we spent more time policing the hoarders than we did helping people who really needed winter clothing. And so we changed to a, a very low price concept. Um, many of our jackets people can buy for $2. If you come in for your children, they're one and $2, most of them. The most expensive children's jackets are five. If they're a brand new one with tags, sometimes they might pay 10. But uh, as many of you know, if you've been out shopping for winter clothing lately, those are ridiculously low prices, and it's fantastic to be able to help people. This year, I will say, just as by way of announcement, if you've got surplus, if you are wanting to do any kind of a code drive, if you haven't gone through the closet yet, many of you probably have, if you've got extras, please send them our way. If somebody's coming to Sioux Falls, they can just drop them off anytime, any time of year, really. Some people think, oh, it's summer, it's 90 degrees, you don't want coats. Yes, we do. We'll take them any time of year. Um, we're particularly in need right now of gloves and mittens and children's coats, men's coats, always. Uh, we're doing okay on women's right now, but I think the reason for that is women tend to be a lot gentler on their clothing, and so there's a lot more of that to go around. <laughs> and uh, us guys, we wear things till they're threadbare, until the style is so far out that our wives finally rebel and say, get rid of that thing from 1975. Uh, but it still fits. <laughs> so um, my role as the, uh, as the pastor there is to meet with guests as they come into the Center of Hope. And we have a care center that they're welcome to. You'll see pictures of that. There was me visiting with a guest right there. That was kind of staged, but it was an actual visit with an actual guest. And um, one of the things that I first do is when a guest comes in, if they're kind of new to me, is I'll say, sit down, tell me your story. After we exchange names, that is. And then um, that, that I've found to be a really effective way to kind of get the ball rolling with folks when they come to the Center of Hope because it gives them an opportunity to tell what they are interested in telling at that moment. Some of them cut right to the chase. I'm like, they'll be like, I need some clothes and you know, I'm new to town, I have no money, I don't have a job and I need some help. Others will sit down and say, you know, I just uh, have kind of had a rough couple of years and here's some of the things that have happened to me. Here's what's going on in my life. And uh, those are sometimes the ones that I, I like to hear first because then it offers me an opportunity to get right below the surface of what I call felt need. Sometimes, yes, it's important that we get them a jacket. And if they're new to town and they have no job and no other income, then we will offer them free winter clothing to get them going. Or maybe it's a pair of jeans or a t-shirt. But if I find out that they've got some income and they have the ability to pay for that, I'll invite them to shop in our store and to look around and see what they can find. A lot of times we have items that are tagged for free as well. Um, when those are their come first, first come first serve, when they're gone, they're gone. But um, in the process of meeting people's needs, their physical needs, their more immediate needs, we have an opportunity to kind of dig beneath the surface and find out what their deeper needs are. Um, one of the joys I have is being able to kind of say, you know, you've been in a few times now, 
and it seems like you're having a hard time getting things going. Can we talk about why that's happening? You know, can you tell me what, what's going on? What's, what's keeping you from kind of getting and staying on track? And then they'll begin to kind of open up a little bit because we have at least a little relationship. They know that I care for them on a, on a different level, so they're willing to kind of say, yeah, I'll share with you a little of my heart and my mind and talk about who I am. Sometimes people come in, it takes a long time to break the shell, as I say. You know, their shell is hard. There are people who come and they just want to use the computer to do some job applications. Maybe they're just here to use the phone. They're in, they're out. They don't want to talk. That's okay. We're there for that too. Um, we had some guests who recently came in. We have, in our new location, we have a less formal chapel than we did in our other one. It was, it's actually bigger. I kind of like it because it's a little more open air, but it's more of a cubicle in the corner. And there was one gentleman, he came in uh, a few times and he always needed bike repair. And that's one of the things we do. So we have bikes for them to use, but while his bike was in the shop, he would go to the chapel and he'd sit and listen to music, take a nap sometimes, and or read the Bible over there. And I thought, after a while, I thought, now he's coming maybe because, you know, and I talked to one of the guys and they're like, well, I just need some adjustments and this and that. I'm thinking, is he putting his bike out of adjustment so he can come and sit in the chapel for a while? <laughs> it was kind of hot then, so I don't blame him. Um, that's, that's one of the things we allow. We're not, uh, we're not a day uh, center, like a day room where people can just hang out all day, but we will invite them to come in and find some peace and quiet for a little. If they're there for half an hour and they want to just walk around or come and sit in the chapel, uh, just come in and visit with us, we're okay with that. Um, we don't have food. We don't have, we have very minimal financial assistance to people. And um, so we're kind of unique in that people don't come in there saying, pay my rent or, you know, I'm behind on my utilities. They might say that, but then we get the opportunity to point them to places where they can get that assistance. But because we're not about those kinds of things, a lot of times we have, we're in a unique position to be able to kind of just address people's general need and be able to say, what's going on? Tell me your story. And uh, a lot of times that provides opportunities for us to, I think, minister in a really unique way. Um, you may or may not be aware that the Center of Hope is, is non-publicly funded. So we don't receive monies from United Way or other agencies um, besides individuals and churches. Some corporations get behind us. They'll, they'll do some giving and stuff like that. But um, because we're not publicly funded, we are able to be really free with our message about the gospel. Uh, we're not limited in the way that we are be able to present uh, our Christian faith to people. There's no little restrictions or, or strings that are attached to any of that stuff. And so I just want you to know how much we appreciate the gifts that you give, whether it be in the form of those coats, hats, mittens, and gloves that we talked about before, or <clears throat> if it's in the form of you know, your financial giving. Um, both of those are vitally important to continuing to do what we do. And uh, our bike ministry, for example, um, we did some numbers oh, a while back. And we figured out every one of our bikes probably cost $60 a piece for us to get out the door. Well, our bikes start at $10, <laughs> and they go up to 60 So the vast majority of the bikes that we sell, uh, we're not, we're not, even breaking even as far as our cost for rent, for staffing, for the parts and the, and the things that have to go into that in order to get that out the door to people. That's where your partnership with us in the financial realm is so important. And um, you know, it's, uh, it's so appreciated too. Um, we, we really do understand that it's everybody's little parts that kind of make it all click. So thank you for thinking of us I'm going to be in the back after church for a little bit um, to kind of visit with anybody if you have specific questions. I'll be wearing a mask, not because uh, I'm afraid of any of you, 
but because I'm trying to be respectful of the fact that we got this nasty going around and and I'm trying to keep do my part to kind of keep it on the limit so um, thank you so much for inviting me over um, I'd be happy to talk with you back there we've got some information if you're interested in doing a coat drive or gathering some bikes from your region um, that kind of thing I'd love to visit with you about that as well and uh, any other questions you might have about our ministry and what we do at the Center of Hope. Thank you. Anyone else have a question for John? I guess I'm not sure where you're located. Oh, thank you. I think it was up there, but it's not super clear. And I know these slides are rolling by pretty fast. So our new location is 1905 East 8th Street which is the old school for the deaf. So if any of you are familiar with uh, where they used to do the Swim America lessons in Sioux Falls there, uh, that's on that same campus. We're in what, what is the old gymnasium and swimming pool building. So we have a really unique facility. You can kind of see by some of the pictures, you can tell where the gym is there. And our bike shop now is over top of a, uh, a swimming pool. So. It was interesting, they built walls down the middle of it and then they put a, some kind of a deck on there and poured concrete over, but you can see all the way around the edge, four feet, eight feet, 12 feet. It's, <laughs> it's kind of, it's, it's interesting. There's like little fish on the wall in our, in our bike shop. Any other questions? Is that, does that answer it? Off 10, uh, East 10th Street, so if you were to take 229 South, take the 10th Street exit, just a few blocks to the west. And we're right there. You know where that new Popeye's chicken place is? We're just a couple blocks past that there on 10th Street. So, How many employees do you have? Um, Full-time staff. There's one, two, three, four, five of us. And then we've got a part-time guy who helps out with bikes. Um, we're a couple shy. We had a couple of people move on this spring, and it's been, been kind of interesting. It's part of the reason why we've been very careful at the center uh, to wear masks. We've been able to stay open. We only closed for a couple of weeks early on when we were trying to kind of find our way through this. And we've been able to stay open all the way through, but we're really diligent about wearing our masks and having our guests do that when they come in. And so far, we've been really fortunate to be able to stay open. If, if one or two of us got sick, we'd probably have to close just because we're that short-staffed. I mean, as far as we've got what I call not necessarily short staff, but we, we are minimally staffed <laughs> for what we do. So, but we're, we're blessed, we're thankful. Any other questions? Yes? Ah, it's a great question because not very long ago we were not taking children's bikes, but in the new year we're actually looking at beginning what we call a kind of a, we're calling it geared to empower. That was the clever name our bike guy came up with for it and we're actually going to open our bike ministry to families. Um, they need to show uh, financial, shall we say, financial uh, need so that they can meet that because we don't want to start competing with um, other places as far as, you know, we want to be able to provide to folks who really need some help with that. But yes, we are starting to take children's bike is the short answer. The long answer is that's a, a program expansion that we're looking at in the new year. So we've begun to gather those bicycles now already because we need time to get them repaired, put in order, get them organized and be ready so that when we open the gates on that program, we expect that they're gonna fly out of there once the word gets out. Because we've had a lot of requests in the past for children's bikes, but we've been a, an adult bike ministry until now. So. Thank you for asking that question. Great question. You say bicycles that might need some repair? Yes. The answer to that is yes. Almost anything will take. Um, if it's uh, like pre-war era, has wooden spokes, probably should just <laughs> you know hang it on the wall. Um, <laughs> if um, if it is even semi-functional. Uh, if it just has a couple flat tires, a lot of times people will apologize when they bring stuff in because you know it's got a one shifter that's missing or you know something isn't exactly right on it and we're like, don't apologize. 
Um, most of the bikes we can fix. If we can't, thankfully, we need those parts. So we will part that bike out, and then those parts go into our inventory to repair the bikes that are coming in or the bikes of our guests when they return because we do have that option for them to come back and have their bikes repaired. Normally we would have invite them in and have them work on their bike with us. We teach them how to fish kind of thing. Um, but during COVID, we've decided that we need to limit the exposure of our guests and our volunteers. So we're just taking their bikes into the shop, fixing them for them and sending them out. But yes, the answer to that is yes. All kinds. Any other questions? <clears throat> These are really good ones, good practical questions. Thank you. Gary, thanks for giving time for questions right here because it's You're great when everybody can hear the answer all at once. Sure. Thank, you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, John. For thanks again for having me. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. And as you learned this morning, um, Sioux Falls isn't quite so far away. Um, we can make it quicker than... <laughs> So, yeah. so, shall we go to our, our God in a, in a time of prayer? Our Father in heaven, we come unto you and we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are God and that you are in control in a world that is struggling. And Lord, we thank you that you place us here. You place us here to do your work to focus on you, to give hope. And we thank you, Lord, for the center of hope and for the encouragement that it brings to, to people who are struggling with life. And that it not only gives just momentary relief of the cold or a ride, but it points people to you. And Lord, may that be the desire of each of us, to point people to you through love and mercy and caring, remembering what you did for us. Lord, we pray that you will especially be with us in this time, a time of much confusion, differences of opinions and conflict, of sickness and sorrow and death. And we ask, Lord, that you bring healing. Lord, you came to this world. You came to this world and you healed the sick. You made the blind to see, the lame to walk. And Lord, we pray that you will heal our land, that you will heal our world. And we know that it's more more than just a virus. For we are sick spiritually. We're all sinners who need your grace. And Lord, we thank you for the grace shown to us in Jesus Christ. We thank you that we can come here this morning and we can worship you. We can hold those up who are struggling. Lord, we pray that you will be with Rex and we ask that you will bless him as he has moved into the nursing home. We pray that you will encourage him that he may know that you are with him. We pray too that you will be with Gerald and Leanne. We thank you that they've improved as much as they have. We pray that you continue to bless them and give them strength. We ask, Lord, that you will comfort the family of Leonard DeVries, and that you will bless them. Lord, we thank you that his struggle on this earth is over. Lord, we, we ask that you will be with our nation in this week as there's been much talk about elections. And Lord, we often put much of our hope in who will be elected. And yet, Lord, we know that you are in control and you can accomplish your purpose. And we pray, Lord, that your will might be done and that 
you might be glorified. We know that you're building much more than a nation. You're establishing the kingdom of God, something that will last for eternity. And sometimes things aren't the way that we would like them. But we thank you that we know that you are in control. We ask that you will be with us now as we continue to worship. We ask that you will be with all those who are sick or those who are quarantined and aren't able to come out. We ask that you will bless them and give them healing. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us to fix our eyes on you. We ask, Lord, that you will help us to be an encouragement to others. We pray that you will be with those who are struggling with depression, a feeling of loss. And Lord, we pray that you will fill them with the peace and knowledge that you love them. We ask that we might be hands and feet of you to share that with them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And John has offered to do the children's message this morning, so at this time, if the children want to come forward, um, John will be doing the children's message for you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. <laughs> you guys are looking a little sleepy there. I thought, make sure you're awake. Did you notice I put this on? Do you think it's cold in here? No, neither do I. But I brought my coat this morning up front because I wanted to talk about winter. Did you guys notice that we got a little snow here recently? Yeah. Some of you were pretty excited about that, weren't you? Were some of you not happy to see the snow? Really? Okay, because like I was, I had kind of mixed feelings myself. As long as I don't have to drive far in it, I kind of like snow. So um, when, the, when the winter comes though, and the snow comes, the cold comes, right? How many of you have nice warm winter coats? Yes, all ready for winter? Yeah, I figured. Gloves, hats, mittens, boots, yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that we do at the Center of Hope is we try to make sure that everybody that needs a coat or some gloves, you notice I don't have any gloves or hat on, right? That would be really crazy. I'm already getting pretty warm in just this thin coat, but can you imagine if you had to stand outside last week when the wind was blowing and it was like 20 degrees and all you had was a thin sweatshirt and no gloves and no hat? Right? Some of you are really tough. You wear a sweatshirt all winter. I know that. But I personally like warm coats and gloves and hats and all those things. So one of the things we do is we try to make sure that we can have those things ready for folks when they come. Do any of you have coats that you just outgrew at home? Yeah, I was thinking maybe some of you did. Or some hats and gloves, maybe you got new ones and your other ones are still okay, you could pass those along. That's exactly the kind of way that you guys can help out the Center of Hope in helping other people. So I just wanted to kind of have you think about that this morning, because a lot of times I know you guys are out here and you're like, I'm just a kid, what can I do to help out? You know, there are small things like that that you can do to help other people. And so maybe you're saying, hmm, I have a coat that I outgrew, and it, I know some of you, you grow really fast. You go through seasons like that, yeah, where all of a sudden you're like, whoop, this, this fit me two months ago, but no more. I didn't even have a chance to hardly break it in. So those are the kind of coats and gloves and things that are awesome for us to receive because they're barely worn. But even if they have somewhere on them and they still zip up and they're still ready to be worn for winter, we'd be happy to receive those. Can you guys pray with me this morning that we can
do our best this winter to make sure we try to think of others. Would that be okay? Pray with me? All right, let's pray together. Father, I just thank you that uh, you provide what we need. And Lord, I know that sometimes we take for granted things like coats and gloves and hats. And um, a lot of times, Lord, maybe we've experienced cold ourselves, so we know what that's like. And uh, so, Lord, I pray that as we either experience that for ourselves or as we're kind of realizing that we have extra and that we can help others, that we would be willing to do that, whether it be with our extra coats, hats, and gloves and mittens, or maybe it's just a kind word or something nice that we can do for someone else. Because you love us, we love others. So help us all to do that. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. You guys were really good. All right, you can go have a seat. I'm going to take my coat off now. Is that okay? <laughs> all right, thanks. Thank you, John. Thanks for taking your coat off. Um, <laughs> I was starting to feel a little warm already. And we always tell the kids, um, we've been blessed to be a blessing. And uh, we often forget how much we've been blessed. So. For our scripture this morning, we turn to the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 10, and we'll read verses 25 through 37. Luke chapter 10, beginning at verse 25. On one certain occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord, and may God add his blessing to it. If any of you have watched some of the presidential debates or the questioning of the new Supreme Court Justice, Amy Barrett, you sometimes get the sense that those asking the questions really don't want an answer. Or 
they want the person being asked the question to be put in such a spot that no matter what they answer, it's going to offend somebody. Somebody ain't going to like the answer. And as we look at this passage, it says an expert in the law comes to Jesus not to really get advice from Jesus, but to put him in that spot to make him feel uncomfortable, that no matter what he answers will be right. And he asks him the question, since he's an expert in the law, he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What was Jesus to say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Believe in me and you shall be saved. He could have said that. It would not have sat well with some of the people there. Jesus meets him where he's at. He says, you know the law. He asks him a question again. How does it read? And rather than focusing on just one portion of the law, um, keep the Sabbath day holy, which was highly emphasized. He goes to the broader term. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus says, there you have it. And yet the man felt he didn't like that answer. It wasn't what he wanted to be told. He didn't put Jesus in the spot he wanted to. So he then says, but who's my neighbor? And Jesus goes, a little deeper and tells them the story of the Good Samaritan. I sometimes wonder if Jesus were to appear here today and the news media could interview him. What would they ask him? How would they try to put him on the spot? Jesus, who should we vote for on Tuesday? What would he answer? Jesus, about this pandemic, how should we handle this? About this issue of homosexuality in the churches, how should we deal with that? And they would like to ask all these controversial questions and see how Jesus would answer. And if Jesus didn't answer the way they thought he should, they would try to jump on him and say, he really must not be Jesus. And if he did answer the way they felt he should, yes, see, I told you, we had it right. And we live in a world that is that way, do we not? We place much value on our opinions and we often miss the deeper things. Just like at the center of hope, people come wanting material things, but they have deeper needs. And all of us have deeper needs. And Jesus tells them this story of this man who's traveling and he's robbed and he's thrown into the ditch, beaten up, half dead. And experts in the law come by. A rabbi. A Pharisee. And they would defile themselves by associating with him. So they pass by on the other side And then this this guy who's an exile, really, a Samaritan, one the Jews didn't have much to do with, comes by and he sees him and he picks him up and sets him on his donkey and he takes him to the inn. He bandages his wounds and he pays for his expenses. 
And he says, if anything more is needed, I'll pay the rest. And then he says to the man, who was a neighbor to this guy? And it's obvious. It's obvious. It's the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus asks us the question, who is it you want to be? Who is it you can count on? When you're down on life, who is it that you want to show up? I've enjoyed watching some some movies um, that kind of hit my heart once in a while. And there's an, an older movie, um, some of you are familiar with it. It's called The Knight's Tale. And the guy is the star of it who passed away, Heath Ledger, plays the part of a guy who's really down on life and yet finds himself playing the part of a knight, even though he's just a common man. And he has great success, and it comes to the point where he's going to fight for the championship, and it's found out that he's just a common, ordinary guy. And he's put in bonds, and he's staked there to be executed. And the crowds, which had been cheering for him earlier, are now throwing vegetables and everything else at him and spitting at him and hitting him in the face. And those who had supported him through all his valiant fighting are standing there beside him trying to fight him off. And Prince Edward comes in and stands and looks at him. And he thinks, oh no, I'm done. This is royalty, and I've pretended to be royalty. And he looks at him, and he says, I look at your friends, and they're sticking by you, even when everyone else is opposing you. He said, if I knew nothing else about you, that would be enough. Jesus. Jesus came for us. And those of us who've experienced Jesus will stand by Him no matter what. No matter what people say or think about us. See, it makes all the difference in the world. Knowing Jesus. And the world needs Jesus. We can argue about all kinds of things. Sometimes the church would argue about how do you observe Halloween or Reformation Day. Sometimes that could be an argument. Today is All Saints Day. Every day, every day should be All Saints Day. Every day is an opportunity, an opportunity to show the love of Jesus Christ, to give hope. We have one who came from heaven to be our neighbor. He tells us, love your neighbor, the outcast, the guy who don't have his own jacket, the guy who don't have his own home address, the guy who don't know the next meal that he's coming from, and a lot of it can be over the decisions he's made in life. But where would you be without me? And of all of us would have to say, we're all lost without Jesus. But how blessed we are. Regardless who wins an election, 
Jesus is still on the throne. And we can have hope. We can be excited knowing that God is in control. And sometimes He has us go through times that we would not desire to bring us a bit closer to Him and help us really appreciate what He's done for us. Yesterday in the funeral service that I did for Leonard DeVries, Leonard lived a, a life up to 85 years of perfect health and strength. The last two years, just very weak. Why? Why have to go through two years of weakness? Maybe, maybe so he could be more excited about going home. Maybe so it's easier that his family could let him go. Sometimes God works in mysterious ways to accomplish his purpose. Sometimes he lets us end up in that ditch, being picked up by somebody else so we can and truly appreciate the love of others. Sometimes we fail, so we truly appreciate the grace of our, Jesus, of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we can go out and live as the saints he's called us to be. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we come unto you in this day, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you that you reached out to us when we were totally helpless and you picked us up and you give us a reason to live today and each and every day that we might bless our neighbors. We pray that they may not see us, but that they may see you and give you thanks. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let us stand and profess what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated and we'll sing together number 604 while we take time to, to bring our offerings.
Our Father in heaven, we come unto you in this morning, and we thank you, Lord, for blessing us so richly, for giving us far more than we need or deserve, far more than many others. And we thank you for an opportunity to give back a portion of what you've entrusted to our care, and we ask that you will multiply it, that you will use it for the furtherance of your kingdom, that you will use it to touch the lives of those who need to see you, who need to trust in you. Lord, may you accomplish your purpose through your church, that many may worship and praise you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. For our benediction this morning, we turn to the Gospel of John. John chapter 15, where Jesus says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends. For everything I've learned from my Father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to bear fruit, go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command love each other. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Amen. For our closing song, we sing number 440, So Send I You. I agree.